No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Yes, I'm sir. out here with Zoe Dollars. My guy. How you feeling? You know, I'm cooling, man. I feel great. You're the talk of the town right now. You went viral today. Uh, you know, I try not to, man. I try to do 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 things the right way. Nah, that, was, that wasn't the right way? I mean, you know, it got out of hand. You know what it is. So what happened? Tell me about the situation from your man, perspective. This, this is what happened, right? You know, when he came here. Say what he said and mm -hmm. all that. And I mean, my reaction him. was like, ooh, not a good idea. And you told him. Yeah. And I told I told him, like, yo, you know what? But he's a kid. We wasn't trying to beat him up. Like, mm -hmm. what would it look like making all these gorillas beat this little kid up? <laughs> I really, like, was trying to talk to him at that situation. You know what I'm saying? But he just on the internet keep antagonizing me, just keep saying shit, keep putting little videos and being funny. I'm like, you know what? That's cool. And just so happened... Ronnie J called me to come to the studio to come cook up with him and shit. You know, Ronnie, my guy. Shout out, Ronnie. And then Ronnie asked me, yo, you cool with Skinny and stuff? He coming through this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, he cool, Ronnie and shit like that. You know, me being a real one, not telling Ronnie like, oh, nah, fuck that nigga, da, da, da. Mm. I didn't do that. You know, I told Ronnie, yeah, he cool. So Ronnie like, yeah, he going to pull up. I'm sitting next to Ronnie. He called Ronnie, yo, I'm on my way. I'm finna pull up. So he came. By the time he came, I was in the booth recording. So I was doing a hook for Ronnie and shit. Okay. And then my brothers was there too. My brothers was already on their way. And they came to the studio. And I told my brothers, yo, you know Skinny from the pull-up. They was like, oh, yeah, all right, cool. I'm like, y'all niggas, make sure y'all don't do nothing. Right. That's to show you. like, yo, Right, because you don't want the situation to escalate. Not even that. I just don't want it to seem like Ronnie set him up or something like mm, that. You know what I'm saying? Good point, yeah. So I told my brothers, I'm saying nothing. I'm in the, I'm in the booth recording. And then I just seen some shit pop off, and I'm like, what the fuck going on? I guess my brother said something to him. Really? You know, and then... So they started the conversation yeah, before. Yeah, so security guard held my brothers in and pushed him out and closed the door. You know what I'm saying? His so security guard. His security. T had two big security guards. So on his way out, I was still recording, so I took the headphones off, walking. When I seen him walking out, I grabbed my phone, and I recorded him going down, because I knew he was going to run. Mm-hmm. He like, what's up, bro? What's up, bro? <laughs> and he going down. Right. So I went after him. My cousin and my other homeboy ran down, and he just sprint, took off running. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm like? If you look at the video, when I ran outside, I'm like, yo, chill, chill, hold it down. Like, right. I ain't even want him to fuck him up. I wanted him to grab him for me to talk to the nigga. Like, yo, right. like, what's up with all that tough talk on the internet? Like, a lot more people need to get that type of shit. Like, rappers get on the internet and talk crazy and don't really be on that. It's so crazy that he has two security guards and he's not even famous or even, like, a real rapper yet. Yeah, it's two big security guards about the same size as my brother. Right. I mean, imagine needing that and you're not even famous yet. It's crazy. <laughs> but you, you're not 6'9", bro. Right. You're not 6'9". Like, you a little homie. Like When you were watching the 6'9 shit... Did you at least like enjoy it from the theatrical Hell perspective? Yeah. Hell yeah, six <laughs> nine. The internet is crazy right now with our six nine. Mm. Like that nigga was entertaining as hell. But it's like, it's a difference between that and actually doing that to real people. You mm. playing with the matrix, right? Like I wasn't gonna do nothing to him though. Like right, because to be, be honest, honest, the I, situation I mean, with you, you would you punch a nigga like Skinny from the nine? I wouldn't because well, exactly. number one, it's just gonna look crazy. But number exactly. two, it's like I'm a big ass, grown ass, thirty five year old. Exactly. It's not gonna look right. And from exactly. your perspective, it's like you are too deep. I've seen you a million times. I know how you roll. I know you roll with serious dudes who are capable of serious stuff. But you're not. I've never seen you take it there. Never. You don't even you, see me go back yeah. and forth on the internet with right. rappers. I don't even do that. But my brothers, they different. They them boys ain't no rappers. Mm. Them boys not no street. Them boys not no industry people. You're they, thinking about the future a little bit more than the people around you. Nah, nah, for sure. They was on some shit. And I was just like, and then he got on the internet. I came by myself. He could have pressed me. He was 15 deep. Bro, I'm I'm gonna go to the studio and get the footage and send it to you. He walked in the studio, two big security guards and like four other people with him. Mm -hmm. They walked in. He walked in at first with a regular hoodie on. And then when he was leaving out, they made him switch his hoodie. <laughs> they made him switch his hoodie out. Like, whoa, hold on. What's up with y'all? 
Holy shit. It wasn't even that type of time. I mean, it's, do you feel like it's just kind of even ridiculous that you are involved in a situation yeah, with somebody is. like that? It's kind of corny. It's right. kind of corny, you know, because, you know, the kids going to be like, oh, nah, he's doing it for clout. No, the fuck, right? Right. But I mean, the kids, very credible the person, kids know what it is. You look at his Instagram comments and they all know what's up. Like, that, that's bad. Like, his own fans know. <laughs> like, man, nigga just wanted you to, like, highlight you, man. Like, what's up with that? Like, I might give you some advice. Like, little homie, listen. Mm. If you talk like that, it could result to that. You right. know what I'm saying? Some some niggas don't got no no thinking like I do. All oh, my homies do. Mm -hmm. They would have walked in there, seen them, boom, bam, boom, boom, bing. Right. But people <laughs> think like it. young kids get into the rap game and they think that they need to stand up to people who are blatantly <laughs> like he on his story. He was saying like they know what's up. They don't want these hands. It's like, bro. You're talking about a dude who's like way bigger than you. Like, there's nah, that that's... would not be a fist fight, even if it was just that. I don't even that just do that. that alone. What I should have did was grab him and snatch him into the booth and close the door and talk to him. Like, because he walked right by the booth and then the booth door opens inside. Mm. I could have just opened it. Come here. Let me talk to you real quick. I didn't even do that. And I know you that to, I think that you probably would have been satisfied if you got him privately. Talk to him, That's it. get him to apologize, That's get it. him to show some respect. Boom. That's All right, it. we can leave the situation it, over. It Don't say my name, it and then we're done. It wouldn't even went to the internet. Right. I promise you. I did that because I know what he was going to do. He First thing he did was jump on there. Boop, boop. Ah, uh, no, he dollars that, that, that. Then he made a video and put on academics. Uh, uh, this nobody ass nigga. Da, da, da. Get off this skinny nigga. I'm like, yo, bro. Right. You know what? When I run into you, we're going to have a conversation. Yeah. I'm not going to incriminate myself. When I run into you, I'm going to beat you up. I'm going <laughs> to fuck you up. That, right. No, bro. We're not moving like that. I'm I'm not even I'm not even on it, Adam. If you see me all the time, I be talking about positivity and trying to do different shit. Mm. I'm going to be giving money shit. We ain't trying to go that route. I mean, you're a little man, man. Definitely. If I run into him now, I still want to talk to him. But do you ever feel like you are sort of finding yourself in that kind of like enforcer position where somebody says something disrespectful online or whatever, and you are just the dude to Pull up. Like, there's a lot of people in that position. Like, whack. You'll always exactly. see whack. If somebody fucks up in LA, whack would be like, no, no, no. And he goes, he'll scold them on Instagram so, or whatever. Sometimes you, sometimes you could do it for fun. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you do it for fun if you bored. I think that's what this case is because it's yeah. not like you were it's never like concerned, like, oh, who's he with? Man, if who, it's, who, you know. If it's a serious situation, I won't even speak on it on the internet. Mm. You won't even hear nothing about it. We have plenty of real situations that nobody don't even know. We're not even talking about it. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. And I see you, it's on site. Yeah. It ain't even going to be my homies. It's me. Mm -hmm. Or I jump into my DM. Yo, what's up? Here go my number. What's up? Let's meet up. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's fight. Let's shoot it out. Whatever you want to do. But I don't even be on that type of time. I be trying to chill, man. Mm. There's too much money to get, man. I got an album out to come out. You're moving around. Oh, so the album is about to come out. Yeah, for sure. Really? Yeah. You've been working on that for a couple of years, right? I've been working on it for a minute, but I got I work so hard, bro. I, mm. All I do is record. And I got so much music, but I just decided to like... I'm going to put this last year being humble shit out. Mm. Last year being humble, humble, that's the name? Yeah, that's the title. I like that. For sure. You feel like that's that's where you've been at? You've been humble all these years and shit's and about I've, to change? I've been, I've been super humble. And not in an arrogant sense. You know, not in a sense like I'm finna just bug out on everybody or go bad on everybody. But it's more like show people my talent, show people my work, show people the shit I'm doing. Like I'm really reserved. Mm. I didn't go buy brand new cars and the internet don't even know about it. Really? But I think that's what motherfuckers want to see. Yeah, see, that's crazy. There's like, there's things you do, and then there's things you do on the internet, and yeah. it's very different. Like it's some two different things. Some people will never drink lean without putting it on Instagram. Man, I know you're not you're not a drug guy like that or At whatever, all. but that's just funny to me that people really like. It's they, like I know people like, who have drug addictions, and I know people who have Instagram drug addictions. Exactly. <laughs> you would well, think that they were a junkie based on their story. Exactly, and they not. They right. not living like that. But, but it's they're crazy. showing that's, off that lifestyle. But that's what the internet do, though. It, it's like almost like if it didn't go on Instagram, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm saying like I done jump on jets a million times and never posted it. Really? I'm saying like we man, I'm going to sleep. I'm getting on here and I'm going to sleep. When I land, I'm coming off. Nobody don't even know. Mm -hmm. This is regular shit. I Some know, things you don't post online, man. I know really, really popular rappers who have cut, who have gotten bad fades, got the dog shit kicked out of them this year, and it never came out. And it's kind of crazy to just think like, man, that dude's career. If people knew about that, yeah, it would be serious yeah. damage to their career. No, nah, yeah, I, he I, is I, lucky I, as fuck. I know about it. I know a lot of rappers that punk other rappers, and you don't hear nothing about it. Mm. And it's like, we know the the cool guys of the game. Though we'll hear about it. We'll get the videos, but. I never leak it out. Mm. 
But that, I just had to, because I know he was about to do that. And to me, it'd it be like the internet just be believing anything nowadays. It'd mm. it be crazy. Like, I got people in my comments like, ah, he was by himself. Why you pulled up with five guys? What? I was in that studio alone in the booth. Mm. My brother, I told my brothers, yo, so-and-so about to pull up, don't do nothing. Oh, God. My I dog believe. right here, ask him. They was in the studio. I made them leave. I'm like, yo, y'all leave. And they still did when you were in the booth, right? They, when, when, I, <laughs> when they left. When he came in, I just seen all of them came walking in. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. It's going up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, but man, I ain't tripping, man. How would you compare that situation to when you uh, had words for Vic Mensa over what he said about X? Ah, Vic Mensa's situation was an emotional situation, you know? X freshly dead, and we mourning about it. We just ain't like it, you know? Yeah. That ain't no beef, dude. That's just a respect thing. It's like, yo, you just got to respect the dead and respect our homie. Yeah. Like, if you're going to disrespect a dead man, there's a lot that comes with that. Regardless of uh, allegations, regardless of how he died, you're talking about a dead kid. (laughs) At the end of the day, obviously, people are going to get really, really upset about that. He can't can't defend himself, so he's going to have people that want to defend him. It's like, X fans are so big, they'll kill you. Mm. They'll destroy you. They'll put a spell on you. Yeah, so it's like, man, that was just something I ain't like. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So how well did you know X? X is my dog. Yeah. And on no music tip either. Like, X was my homie. Like, his homies would be like, yo, that nigga love you, bro. How'd you meet him? We met. We At first, we met um in Miami at, uh, I think, PNB Rock had a show. Okay. That's when he was rolling with uh Orlando. Mm-hmm. I met him there. And then we ended up really, like, clicking at, like, a, a paintball thing. And then he jumped in my DM, like, just checking on me. Like, regular human being shit. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, what's up with you? What's up with you mentally? You good? What's up with your son? And we exchange numbers and like, yeah, hit me up when I tweet something crazy. Like, I'll tweet something crazy on some trolling shit. Mm-hmm. And he'll hit me up like, yo, man, it's not positive, bro. Like, really? I think you should delete that. Wow. That's not you and stuff. I'm like, hey, I got you. That's or bold. he'll hit me and just want to talk to my son type shit. Really? Yeah. It wasn't on no music tip at all. We ain't get to talk about, yo, when we going to work, when we going to do none of that. He really was that kind of person. It's just like interesting to picture you guys having that conversation because you, you picture them, those being such different parts of Florida. Right. The world he was coming from and the world that I imagine you're coming from. Exactly. You know, we both Florida kids and, you know, X is just a positive person, man. Funny as hell. Like, he always got something to say about you, how you look or what's going on with you or something. You know, so as his homies, we just ain't like that shit, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't appreciate that for sure. So, all right, for the people out there that don't necessarily know where Zoe Dolls is coming from. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about your background, where you're coming from. Man, you know, I'm from Dade County. I had a song, Blow a Check, Run Through the Money, Run. Mm-hmm. That was like one of the biggest songs. And uh, Puff and French end up remixing that song. Then I end up getting my deal with Epic Records right. and Free Bands. I'm signed to Future too. Who were you prior to that song coming out, though? Like, what, had you been working on your music Man, stuff I've for been, a while? I've been been working on music forever. But that was it just the, like the song that's, that broke that's, through. It, it went. That one went. And then, you know, everything else followed after that. You know, tapes, drop projects, and tours. I was on tour with Future, Migos, Post Malone, Tory, Ferg, Nobody Safe Tour. Mm-hmm. And just been working, man. Now I'm about to put this last year being humble project out. That shit about to go. Yeah, I always thought of you as like a dude who... Was inevitably going to end up in a situation in the music industry just because people just fuck with you so hard. Yeah. And like so to see Future sign you and stuff, it just like, it just made a lot of sense to me because it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, Future seems like such a solid dude that he would like yeah, see Zo- sure. Zoe and appreciate his energy that's, and that's shit. That's my brother. That's my brother. You know, from, from Jump, it's been the same. Like, it was crazy how me and him got our situation. He literally was like, yo, come to my hotel room, came, talked about it. Yo, I just want you to be part of the team. Like, you know, like I, I want you to be your own boss, but part of the team. Uh-huh. Yeah, for sure. Made it happen. That simple. Do our homie uh, stand. You know, we made that happen, and that's just been. You know, I don't really get into it. If you see me get into it like that, it'll be like seeing somebody say something crazy about future. Right. And I'm like, yo, chill out. Do you feel like you end up having to be in that position because of signing to him that you have to? Because like with somebody that famous, man, he's so quiet. Man, he's such a humble person. Mm-hmm. He won't even say nothing back to certain people. And they'll think like, ah, okay, I'm going to just keep picking on him. Mm. And you know when you've saying? gotten as big as him, it's like a, such a big decision to like I would say have fun anything. With it. <laughs> I'm that big. I'm having fun with it. I'm way above you. I'm What? What you said? Yeah. I'm, I'm trolling y'all all day. Being that big, that's all you could do. 
You can't really do nothing. You imagine Future jumping out, punching somebody in his face. You can't. You can't see that. Yeah, because I imagine once you get to like Future's level, that it's like that privacy. Privacy is so hard to have hard. that you and end up valuing it over crazy, everything. He got it. Aside from what you see in the media, which is cap, mm-hmm. what else you hear about him? Right. Nah, you barely see him. Yeah, because if you're that famous, it's like. It's crazy. And you just you really treasure the shit that you don't have to share right. with the world because right. there's so much that is being expected of you to share with people. Oh, Hell man. yeah, for sure. So what's what's the in terms of your relationship with him now? Like what's that nah, like? That's and, my and brother. Is that's he my... is he gonna be on the project? Yeah, definitely. Every anything I drop, I'm gonna have future on there. Okay. Whether I'm on his projects or not on his projects, anything I put out for sure. That's just my loyalty to him. You know what I'm saying? Like anything I drop, gotta have something from future on there. Definitely. No matter what. No matter when it is, I could have my own. I I got my own label, my own squad too. You know I me and my brother just did our own label, and it's like you got artists. Uh, we got a few. I got more producers signed to me though. Okay. Yeah, I got this kid named Zen. He made the uh, "Don't Cry" for uh, Lil Wayne and XXX. Oh, really? Yeah, he signed to me. Wow. My guy, super talented. How did that song with Chris Brown come about? Post and delete. Me and Chris just—that's just my guy, man. Chris is just a solid person and. You know, with Blow Check doing what it did, and I ended up having a relationship with him. He got a lot of mutual people that rock with me, like my nigga Hoodie Baby. Uh-huh. And then we ended up just linking up on some Miami shit, Jesky shit. And then, you know, he fuck with me, him, me. Yeah, I fuck with you and shit like that. Can I LA fuck with him a few times? And then we did the record. And I, I actually left when he did the record for me. My DJ was in the studio with him, got the record done. Wow, really? Yeah, he was like, yo, Chris, they sent him that. And then when he did it, he put his verse on the internet. That shit went viral. Uh. Yeah. So he sneak peeked it. Yeah, he put it out. That's we had crazy. that song for like a year before it came out. And it ended up doing crazy numbers. Nah, too. it did. It did. Definitely did. Why not? That's wild. I got some more songs with him too. When you think about what your album is gonna say about you as an artist, like how do you feel in terms of the statement that you're making? Like Man, I'm keeping real with you, man. It's it's like it makes me kind of nervous, but it also makes me feel good because I get to show people a side that they didn't know about me, you mm-hmm. know, melodic side that Really putting like my pain into my music and shit like that. I didn't get a chance to do that. I was rapping my bullshit, it, even though it was shit I done. But I felt like it was bullshit. But did you feel like at a certain point in your career that was just what you had to talk about? Yeah, I felt like that's what it was. Just following what was going on. Even I try to make what I'm going through in my life relate to it, mm-hmm. and then I put it out because I was like, okay, this is going on. I see the science to this. I see the BPM to these type <clears> of records or, or radio. This with it. Nah, now I'm just doing it for my fans. Like I'm. Strictly speaking to my fans from me, like my shit, my real experience that I don't talk about. Mm. You know, put that out. That's why I called it last year being humble because I don't want to be humble about what I'm going through. Mm. I don't want to not make people feel uncomfortable. I want people to feel uncomfortable. I want like some of my fans to listen to something and be like, what? Like he really just he said really that? He really said that? <laughs> oh, he really was going through this? That's an invaluable uh, That's some shit. emotion to get your audience to feel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want him to feel that way. Like, you know, I want him to listen to this shit and say, hold on, wait, 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 what he said? You know, it's a lot of people that's going through shit, man. Yeah, I was just having that conversation with the little Zay kid, but yeah. I think that that's a lot of truth to that, that there's been so much, like, meaningless music that's popped man, off over the past be few so years. Cap. <laughs> that should be big ball cap. I feel like people are, like, gravitating towards stuff that feels real. Now they are. They are. You know, you got, you got niggas like J. Cole, Drake, Kendrick, uh... You got Meek. You got these cats, man. They Davies. They they keeping shit how it's supposed to be. Like I feel like And me- I ain't knocking the bullshit music because it's fun. You get to really like some of some of the people I just named, they music come on in the club. You can't really, you know, you need that vibe sometimes. But it's like Meek blew up this year off of talking about more serious shit. Exactly. You know? Like he he got more serious about talking But that's cause he went through more serious shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like with all the fame and everything else he had going on, he was going through some shit. Just like, Meek is a real real personal friend of mine. Yeah. Like, we talk, like, all the time. Really? About shit that don't got nothing to do with music again. What are you talking about? Sports? We just, man, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> hell no. <laughs> hell no. That's just my nigga, man. We talk about street shit. We talk about, like, becoming super rich, like, $50 million plays and what he got going on and everything. You know, just regular shit. You know, our homie Chico Juan passed away, and that was, like, a, that was our... That's how I met me through my homie Chico Juan. Who's that? You gotta fill me in. Man, that's my guy who um with Trez. He passed away in my in, in Miami. He's from Miami, but he passed away in Atlanta and shit. Okay. He got shot over a situation. Shit, I don't even want to talk about. But yeah, you know, rest in peace, my nigga Chico. That was our mutual friend. 
And that was a good friend of Meek too. So that shit like really fucked us up when our homie passed away. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. What have you been doing while you've been out here in LA? Doing Man. Grammy shit? I've been I've been I've been rocking on these Grammy parties and shit like that, but I've also been recording. I've been writing for other people too. That's really why I'm here. You do a lot of that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Definitely. What kind of artists they put you with? Rappers or like put you with like a they singer? They put me or with everybody. They, really? put me, they put me with some hardest rappers you hearing, pop artists, R and B artists, they put me with everybody. I do all that shit. Have you been doing ghostwriting stuff since the beginning? Yeah, for a while. Really? Yeah. Is that kind of how you start to get known in the industry? Nah, I don't know. Blow checked it, but they they actually didn't know I knew how to write or do the kind of songs I do. Really? And then I end up just writing this one song for somebody, and then it took off, and that kind of like gave me the leverage. Would we be amazed if we knew all of the artists yeah, that don't write their own shit? You definitely would be. <laughs> really? You would be like, oh, but I don't I don't knock it though, cause some the way an artist could deliver some, maybe the writer can deliver it that way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like now, if you're looking at it, you. People don't read credits, man. You know, people attention span be like retarded. Mm. You read credits, you gonna know. You know what I'm saying? You'll know who did what. And on the internet now, it's like you'll see popular writers like Nisha, I think that's her name. She she just did uh 24/7 for Meek. Oh really? She did the hook for LMA. Like that kind of stuff is really coming out now. It's more like it's not like ghost writing. Like oh, I'm gonna be writing your stuff on the table and you gonna say it's you who did it. It's songwriters. Right. Songwriters, you'll never hear somebody pen a verse for Jay Z, but you'll hear a hook that was made by Frank Ocean. Jay Z was really like one of the people that broke open that shit for me because I realized that he was writing some of Dr. Dre's shit early on, <laughs> and then I was just like, "Holy fuck!" Like that just changed how I thought of the verse. Yeah, so like much. Fifty Fifty was writing a lot too. Right. You know what I'm saying like Saha so the Prince, he write mad people write man. Drake wrote songs for people in the industry. Uh huh. I just think it's a talent thing. Right. You know, and then some music I, I write, I can't put it out because it's not my lane. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which sucks. As a musician, I'm supposed to be able to do music in general. It ain't supposed to be a lane that if I came out with Blow a Check, which is boom, 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 money, 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 where I got to stick to that whole formula until I'm out. No, I want to do all types of music. No, yeah. If I want to go get a country singer on one of my songs, then I'm supposed to be able to do that and still make money off of it. But for some reason, they be trying to put you in that box. But who? The label or just the public? I don't know what it is. I just think it's the it's the uh, consumers in general. I think people might like hearing a Zoe Dollar's country song. It's crazy, right? <laughs> but it's true. Who knows? <laughs> Facts. You I've know heard what rappers saying? make songs that sort of were start, starting to edge into like country sound and shit a little Man, bit. Man, look at Juice World. Yeah. Think He's a country it. singer for sure. Look at Juice World. Juice World got that emo and craziness to it, and you hearing him, you like, oh shit! But he put it on some fly beats and shit like that. And there's other cats like that in the game. Look at X, man. Come mm. on, where he from? X is from Broward. Them niggas over there is reckless. It's so crazy because really, when you think about X's career, he came out making a certain type of music, and then by the and time he actually switched. put an album out, man. he was on something so, so different. different. And I, as like his friend and stuff, was looking at it like. I mean, it's dope as an artistic statement, but I don't know if you're going to do the kind of numbers that you maybe were thinking, you and know? And then it. all of a sudden, he did numbers that were so much crazier than anybody ever could yeah. have expected. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's almost like Kodak. Kodak came out with that street shit. He's still on that street shit, but if you listen to him now, he's more melodic. Mm -hmm. He more letting you hear that soul coming out of him. Right. Because that's what he can do that a lot of people can't do. Exactly. You know? Exactly. The da 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 Hey. That's easy. <laughs> a lot of people can do that. Damn, Adam. What you what you saying, Adam? <laughs> no, but I mean that flow had its own place in time, but it's like, you know, th this is but all the, th a, the, the, it's a science to that shit though. It makes it raw. Like you saying some shit like, I just go Gucci in my clothes. Hey. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 hey, yeah, yeah. Like some, anything can be hard, but it's just when you hear too much of something for too long. But we gotta give credit to the person who started that. Definitely. That's who you get that credit to. But, some people could do it hard, but you got to get credit to whoever did the A and the Yah. Mm -hmm. Like, they did what they do with that. Yeah. I, but, I mean, the shit changes and transforms so fast that you could give credit to the person that you first heard get big doing it. Right. But there's no saying that there wasn't some kid in his town with 5,000 followers that, that was doing, doing it too, it too. you know? Right. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. It's almost like the Migos flow. Mm. And them oh, boys man, came and that? changed the game. That changed like that. everything. They changed the game with that. And it's still, people still can't do it like them. But do you feel like as like a rapper, rapper, that you... You know about all the different shit that people are doing, and you can you can 
tell who's using whose flow and stuff. But, but the general public isn't necessarily thinking on that Man, level. Some, these kids not going to know. These 11 years old and 12, 13 year olds on the internet under, under fuck you pay me mm-hmm. and the crazy names. They don't know. They don't care. The internet is scary, bro. Mm. I wish they had some type of limitation on the internet where in order for you to get on there, you got to send your ID, not even on the internet, on certain sites like Instagram. You got to send your ID with your info, address, everything. So when you get on there, you say something, they know it's you. People got to come deal with you. We'd all have way less followers. <laughs> if there was so, like right? a, a process it, in order to sign up for Instagram. Yeah. Man, I just, I mean, it's still a process, but I wish it was like, okay, this is my address. This is where I stay at. If mm. I say this, I got to be held accountable for saying that. I would like to see Instagram help set up fades for for rappers and stuff. Like if somebody's saying something bad about you and you you submit it to them, like look, he's being a bitch, then they'll just send set, you his address. The fade up. This yeah. is where his mom works. That, like they got to do it like that. Or if Instagram ain't have ain't show your following mm. or how much followers you got or how much likes, I wonder how it would be. Mm. Imagine you want somebody paid you just see pictures. You can like it, you can comment, but you don't see how much likes that person got. You don't see how much followers they got. That's the kind of the thing that Kanye put out there. And right. then Twitter actually acknowledged that they sort of agreed that like having the, the number of likes or the number of followers or whatever displayed so prominently. Because think about it. They could show things differently. I remember on Tumblr, when, yeah. I, when a lot of people had Tumblrs, you couldn't see how many followers you had. And that kind of changed the whole way that you used it. If you couldn't easily see how many people had, how many Instagram followers you had, then would people just consider... Man, you know, I, would they think of people differently? People will fuck with you for your talent or mm. for whatever it is that you're showing. If you're just showing fly shit, then it's just fly shit. If you're showing popping shit, it's popping shit. If it's your music that's fire, that's what they fucking with. Mm. I feel like they should do that for at least one day just to see. Well, mm. one day won't count. I'm wrong. They should do it for like a period of time. Like I say they do it for like five months and see somebody's growth on following or streams, whatever it is. You know mm. what I'm saying? Cause now we go on somebody's page. You meet a bitch right now, you talking to her, she might be she might be like, What who, who are you? Mm. Once you see that gram though, it's different. It's weird knowing that that's like that's gonna change your mind. She about see that you. gram is different. Once you, you may DM somebody, if you don't got that blue check, man, they scrolling right past your shit. Mm. You got that blue check, they gonna see it. You hit me, I'm right there. Yeah. I'm seeing oh shit, that's Adam. Hit him back. I, whenever I look through my DMs, I'm basically looking for the blue check. <laughs> it's sad, but it's true because it's like, See what I'm saying? If, if it's not the blue check, then I I don't know. Like, I, like it's, it's just less and of a reason. And we could be concern. passing up on so many gems, man. Mm. Like, we could be, because I'll be going through my, I try, man. I try, I'll be a lot. I'll be trying to go through it like, Oh crap! This nigga got some nice beats. Or I hate when people are like, "Oh, I, I respond to every DM," or I nah, look at every bullshit. DM. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You don't get enough DMs if you're seriously telling me that because I'm yeah. telling you, it would take me hours a day to even begin to go through. Yeah, facts, facts. That's something you probably got to hire a team. And to that's do that. Instagram. That's just one platform. Yeah, that's one platform. You got Twitter. You got everything else, bro. Mm-hmm. Hell no. Hell yeah. no. But so. When you're writing for somebody, does that almost even like open up your creativity more because you definitely. know that you don't have to go out there and say it? Yeah, definitely. It definitely do that because, and I speak to that person too if I get a chance. If it's somebody I know, like I, I want to know like what you're going through and stuff like that, like your emotions. Because whatever I'm writing for you is what I'm going through. Even though we humans, we relate to shit. Mm. Like I might be high as hell and you high right now. I do a high song, you gonna relate to it. Mm. But I might write something that's personal to me. And you don't relate to it. And it'd be tough for them to cut those type of songs. You Definitely. know what I'm saying? Some people be talented and they do it, but you could hear the, uh, it's not the same. But you're not high right now. Hell no. I'm you, sober as You hell. don't do the weed thing. No weed. No liquor. Never been a fan? No, I just don't care for it. Mm. I ain't knocking it. You messed around with it a little bit and just didn't go for nah, it? Nah, I just don't care for it. Really? Just don't care for it. But so. I tried DMT though. DMT for that's, real? That's a different conversation. How was that? Crazy. Change your whole life? Man, my whole life different. God damn it. I need to get on that. You need to open that eye up, Adam. No, yeah. I mean, I've done mushrooms and acid and shit a bunch of times, but I... Nothing I, compared I, to it. Really? Oh, God. You, oh, you God. learned a lot about yourself? Man, I, I learned more than I can say. These 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 people right here, where, where we at? These people right here? Them? They ain't ready for that. Really? No, no, no. They still want to exist. They ain't trying to live. That's good, too, because I'm going to be real with you. I don't think, uh, I'm guessing a lot of people in your type of scene haven't yeah. done DMT. No, they don't, but I try to open my homies' minds up and, and put them on to certain things and 
They'll look at you crazy, but I got like my homie Piffy right here. That boy woke, mm. super woke. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's good to know. I gotta have five hour conversation with him, and we just dare. And it's crazy because some people know things, you know. But some people are so closed minded, you can't teach them nothing. Because mm. if you tell them something, they'll look at you crazy. That's rare to me. Somebody who's open minded enough that you feel like you can give them an idea or talk to them about something. Yeah. That's honestly how I felt about X. Is he that was like that. He felt like he was always growing mentally. Myself, yeah. I don't really have the patience to sit there and talk to a, the average 19 year old rapper kid. Right. Even if we did a good interview and I think you're cool or whatever, it's like I'm not talking on FaceTime for a half hour. No, nah, and, and he was you like, could do that. He was there. Another guy that's like that, Chris Brown is like that too. Really? Super woke. That's why he really tells himself like that, the way he is. That's amazing. Woke. I just met him a couple months ago at a party. Man, it was so good, great. Good nigga, man. Yeah, we were both faded as fuck. It was a good way to and meet him. And he on my album too. Really? Yeah. Another song? Yeah, for sure. Wow, that's crazy. For sure. Me and Chris Brown have a overlap with uh, girls that we hang out with. Let's put it that way. And oh, yeah. But we were like, we, we both realized in that moment we, where we were meeting. That, we, was, we was at a uh, 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 Justin party. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all was together and stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. But it was just a weird thing to realize that we both, like the girl that we knew in common, that we both like really fuck with her, like actually think she's cool. Yeah. But that was like a weird thing to realize because yeah, it's that, like, that's not normally the that relationship. That lets you know like <laughs> your energy and his energy probably on the same type of time and mm. y'all got the mutual person y'all really fuck with. I, I could tell that she was so happy too that we were bonding over thinking that she was all right. Right. <laughs> like a weird thing. It was just like, like, yeah. It's a strange experience. You know what's going on. We're going to keep it player. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep it player. For yeah. sure. So uh, what do you got playing this year? What, what's what's on the Man, the game more plan visuals, man. Album? More, more visuals. More videos. Like, I'm doing more visuals. For this album, for almost everything that's on there, I'm putting a video. Out. Like, my, my single about to come out. Mm. It's called Highway Full of Pain. I'm putting it out like the 20-something. I don't know what exactly. I'll let you know. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll probably premiere with you or something. Let's do it. Uh, it's called Highway Full of Pain. I'm doing a video for that. Video for that about to be ridiculous. Right. That's that, that's the only thing I lack in, man. I, I lack in videos. I ain't. I don't got a lot of visuals because the way I be wanting to bring my visuals to life, it be hard for a lot of directors to do it. And sometimes it be hard for the budget of a video. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It may be a song that the label don't believe in and they don't feel like putting that budget up in. I'm like, y'all want to do that? And all right, cool. We're just going to go to something else. I'm so YouTube-oriented that a lot of times I forget about a performer's music that isn't on YouTube. Like, I just forget to right. go listen to their new tape or their new album. I just am so used to watching the visuals. But exactly. realistically, it's like it takes so long to shoot a video and shit that a lot of times their best shit yeah. is, like, yeah. on, the, I on went, iTunes. Went after, after I, like, when my project is done now, the smart thing I should be doing is, like, I had a conversation with Future, and I text him. He was like, yo... Man, fuck this Instagram shit, man. Come on, let's go up. I'm like, trust me. I'm trying to be like you. I'm trying to shoot these visuals because that nigga shoot 10 videos in like a week or two. Uh -huh. And this song's that ain't even out yet. Right. The videos is done, though. I told him, man, you in 2039, fool. I'm still in 2017. Because <laughs> I be trying to wait to shoot. But this year, I'm trying to like drop the video. I'm trying to drop the song a few days later. Video. Mm -hmm. Even though people be feeling like, the videos keep the song momentum alive because the song could be going and when it start to die out, you drop a video and it bring it back up. Nah, I think now people want to see the visuals. Mm. I feel like you could put a song, a video out without the MP3 and mm -hmm. it's still going to go. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of artists who have honestly, I, I remember when Famous Dex was really going crazy on Worldstar and shit. Right. It was like his stuff wasn't on SoundCloud or, or iTunes yeah, or anything. Yeah, I remember that. So it's like if you wanted to see it, you had to go to YouTube and that helped to him see. to get mad views. Exactly. That's, that's the type of time I'm on. I'm trying to grow my YouTube subscribers and I'm trying to just get more visuals in because I feel like that's making you win. And it's meaningful visuals too. Mm. It's cool. You grab a whole you bunch the, of your yeah. homies and you got some bitches and put them in a video. That shit cool. Some songs you need that. Mm. But I don't be, I'm not doing that type of song anymore. It's so. weird, too, because the, the more time and effort you put into your career, the more you find yourself in a position where it's not okay to just do a bullshit-ass video in, exactly. in an Airbnb all of a sudden. Exactly. That's that's just the type of time is on. I'm, I'm about longevity, man. I'm cool. Like It's cats that done came in and they out. You know? Mm. I hear people say, like, who is Zoe Dollars? What Zoe Dollars did, man? Zoe Dollars had blow check on the radio, couches. I had Bad Things. I had Post in the Lead featuring Chris Brown. I had Moonwalk featuring Money Bag, yo. I'm a, I had countless shit on the radio. Mm. You always heard me on the radio, but some people don't listen to radio. Do you think you're just that kind of artist where you just know how to make stuff that works on radio? For sure. The cheat code is there. Mm. I know it. You know, but then I that's not what I want. I want longevity. I want to be able to have a core fan base that 
fuck with me and grow with me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to worry about doing certain gimmicks in order for my shit to go or do weird shit on the internet mm. for me to get something. No, I want my fan. Like, I'm satisfied with this fan base. It's going to grow gradually. As long as I'm somewhere further than where I was last year, I'm cool with that. That's what's up. That's I don't care about just going viral all of a sudden and I'm lit then when that shit die down or these people outgrow me and then my shit just no I think we're really starting to see the limitations of what being an Instagram gangster slash comic can really do <laughs> for your career at a certain point point. And, and it could work if you if you do certain things with it mm. it could work if you're six nine and or blue face where the music is hidden and yeah. you're acting crazy and it yeah. works then okay it could work thing, but. you know what I'm saying it, it could work because like I thought six nine was one of the smartest Entertainers there was But so outside of the street shit The street shit I don't even want to speak about it Because I'm disappointed about it But mm. it's like His entertainment tactics It was smart bro mm. But he was playing with some real niggas He was playing with some real niggas And had some real niggas doing other shit But it was smart It was entertainment my general advice to somebody who didn't grow up in a gang or whatever is if you start to blow up and your music career starts going really well, don't join a gang then. Yeah, because you got the <laughs> it's fucking a bad eyes idea. on you. I'm pretty, yo, I'm pretty sure me and my homies spoke so many times like, yo, the feds is going to mm. do him dirty. And they did him. They made an example out of him. He ain't the first and he ain't going to be the last. We're going to see some other motherfuckers go down the same path, mm. but... My thing is, I just hate how they did him like that. You know what I'm saying? But whatever he did on some street shit, that's just what he did. And as as somebody that comes from the streets, I don't fuck with it. Mm. But I ain't judging him. I just think people should just let him just fade out. We just know what he was, and that's just what it is. Keep it going and focus on some some real shit that's going on. I mean, it's tough to compare Skinny to Nine to Six Nine because his music sucks, and his whole online persona is basically just taking L's over and over. Man, boy's an L like large shirt. Was a big fucking L. Yeah, but you know, it's, I mean, he's a kid, bro. Like, mm. what you expect from somebody who ain't got no guidance from no real niggas? You know what I'm saying, like, one of my favorite CEOs signed them. Ellie Reed, last Ellie Reed signed me. Mm. Oh, did he? Yeah. Wow. The the first day he met me, he signed me. That's you know, crazy. He knows music, so I'm figuring out. He know what he doing with him. You know mm. what I'm saying? Whatever is working, I, I don't know his numbers. I don't know what's going. On. I just see internet numbers. These niggas getting their plays boosted by by what uh machines and shit like J Cole say they paying for views. So mm. I don't know if that shit real. That shit can't make me feel crazy. Like oh he got more followers than you. Cool, my followers are real. Yeah. If I tell them to go do something, they gonna do it. You know what I'm saying if I'm selling a shirt right now for two hundred bucks, I will have five thousand people buy it, and that's a million dollars coming to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can't, skinny probably can't do that. Definitely not. Those, yeah, let's not even talk about numbers and shit. Because you know if, you, if you've really been pa paying fi attention to people's follower accounts for years, like I have in some cases, just because I keep seeing their Instagram over yeah. and over, you notice when there's weird jumps. Exactly. Just, like you could read, you could read these niggas' comments. These niggas got, hey, nice dress. Mm. People will follow you to hate on you too if you're a certain type of Hello, person. Hello, uh, this is a nice window. This is a nice view, and it's a picture of him sitting in the booth. Right. Yo, the sunset looks very nice, and I'm like, <laughs> come on, bro. That's a real thing too. Don't play like that. Or you ever look at somebody's SoundCloud comments and you see a whole lot of like, good, oh, they do good that on, song. This is hot. Like just they, the most generic comments over. They and over. do that on SoundCloud too. Oh yeah, yeah. People buy fake SoundCloud comments. I will look at. I've looked at people's songs and they have a million plays on a song. 300 likes and then four comments. I'm like, what the fuck is this? That don't even make no sense. That makes no sense. That's, that don't make no sense to me. If they, And the thing is about somebody like Skinny, or I could name certain other rappers, <clears throat> Kid Boo, who they're just so <laughs> good at it in the sense that they buy the views, they buy the likes, they buy the con they just do it all to the point where they're really good at tricking people. Yeah. But it's still not going to make your shit hot in the end of the day. Nah, it's not. That shit don't stand. That shit, like, like uh... Drake Pop said, only real music gonna last, man. Mm. Shout out Dennis. Dennis G. And you gotta get him in here. And Where I'm gonna at? tell you the crazy story about him is. Dennis I, is here. He, Dennis Graham? He in LA. Oh. He in oh, LA. Okay. Um, crazy thing about it is how I met him, it was in Tampa when I met him. And I gave him my music and he listened to it in the car. And he was like, yo, my son's on this tour bus right here behind us. Mm. And then he listened to my shit. And he actually was emailing me back and forth for like two years. 
Really? Like, I like this. This is nice. Ah. I'm not too big of a fan of that one for a while. Like, I got emails of me and, him and his pops going back and forth. Wow. Yeah, that's like when Drake first came out with, like, Successful and shit like that. Wow, Dennis Graham. Better, better A&R than we were giving him credit for, apparently. No, for sure. Cool guy, man. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I appreciate you coming in, man. I appreciate you, Adam, man. It's Just under the, kind of funny last... circumstances, but at least they got a chance to, to learn more about you, yeah. even if they might have clicked just for some shenanigans. Yeah, for sure. And uh, that last year, Being Humble, is coming soon, and I got my own label, Litville. It's out. Litville. Yeah, Litville. Dreamville out, Litville in. Oh, uh, I mean Dreamville. <laughs> they gotta coexist. Yeah, that's that's fire though. But my <laughs> yeah. shit, I'm I'm from Miami. We a lit city. Shit is lit in Miami. You come to Miami, it's clubs, it's live on Sundays, it's Opus 22. You know, we going crazy, it's jet skis, we on jets, we in fly cars, so it's lit. So that's why I called it Litville. I was in lit I was in Live with Gucci on stage. One of the greatest moments of my life. Litville, and I saw you too. You did? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Litville. Shaq was right there. Guy Fieri. Exactly. Uh-huh. So you know, this summertime when you see when you hear them Litvilles, them Litville boys on the way, just know what time it is. You know. Yeah, me and my brother, we CEOs and stuff. My brother, one of the CEOs. Let's I don't get know it. where he has. He's somewhere back there doing what he got to do. You know what I'm saying? Fire. And it's my guy Serge, as my role manager. My guy Piffy here. My nigga Coke right here. My nigga J Bape here. You know, gang is here. Zoe got a real ass team. Nah, for sure. You know. Appreciate Move you, man. On. Let's get it, Adam. Thank you, bro. No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, merch too, iTunes. We got you on the merch. No problem. Let's get it. Yeah.